on the attack and release time and all that, those are all available as parameters um, to change the ratio of the attack and the release. But in terms of the GUI, what we've done is limited it to just the bare essentials. So you can go behind the scenes under the hood and change those other settings. But um, right here, right on the front panel, you've got um, a power switch, as you can see, which means the compressor is enabled for this pad, whichever pad we're on. And then there's a side chain button, which is saying this is the detection for the side chain. So, for instance, let's use our kick drum and say this is the detection. Yes. And we're going to turn off the power because we don't want to compress this kick drum. We want yep. the kick drum just to go through uncompressed. Just to be the detector. That's right. And now everything else has it set the way we want already, which is that the power is on. In other words, it will be compressed yep. every time this detector takes place. So now if we hit play and we move the threshold, you can see it's already happening. This is showing us our gain reduction, that blue yes. meter down there. So the, every time the kick happens, there's gain reduction being applied to all the other pads. Yep. So you can get more of a pumping type of feel that way. That's really nice to have that built into the plugin itself. That's going to save so much time. Definitely. It's really handy. And one thing you notice when you do <coughs> sidechain your beats this way is a lot of the time what happens is your snare ends up getting uh, sort of buried because it's falling right with the kick drum. And so and now all of a sudden you used to have kick, kick and snare, kick. And now you don't hear the snare with the kick very much because it's getting ducked down. So uh, a common thing to do is to uh, nudge your snare drums early so you get those ahead of the beat. That way they're taking place before the kick drum has happened yet. Right. That way the snare's uh, crack of the snare drum is going to come through loud. Through. And, yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. Is, is one really handy thing in Nerve 2 is this offset where you can just shift the timing uh, of that pad globally. It'll happen for all patterns everywhere. So no need to go through and try to set an early or late uh, per step, which you can do. There is a late graph here, which allows you to, if you want a specific hit to happen a little early or late, um, you can do that. Uh, but I'm just going to do it globally here to the snare pad. So now our snares are ahead of the beat. You can see here's how it was. Yeah. Kind of getting cut, ducked down too much, but now it's cutting through. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Specifically as well, if you've got a clap sound maybe that's got a little bit of an attack on there as well. That's so. right. Yeah, the, the claps usually, when you when you analyze clap samples, you'll, you'll usually see uh, two or three individual sort of spikes to them. And I love to line it up so that one or at least one or maybe two of those claps is happening ahead of the beat. Mm. Um, it's something that naturally happens when people are clapping in a room. If they're excited, they're going to be a little ahead of time occasionally. Mm. So it's nice to have that feel where things are sort of uh, pushing. Sucking in almost. Yeah, yeah. It provides a nice contrast to swing, which is delaying things late. Yeah. So you get this sort of push and pull kind of effect. So that's a very common thing if you analyze dance tracks. You'll see that there'll be early claps, um, sometimes extremely so, which I find is a, a cool technique. Yeah, awesome. So um, how about adding extra sounds into this into this thing then now? I'm, I'm mm -hmm. actually hearing some kind of a different hi-hat maybe, something a okay. bit stronger. Cool. Let's 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 try that. Um, let's just go to one of the hi hat pads, yeah. just in case. It's always good to work that way. Um, and there's a load button right here. If, you know, you can drag and drop in from your host, or you can drag in from the computer's Finder Explorer type of thing. But I'm just going to use this load button here, which is for wave files, and it takes you automatically to Nerve's Wave folder, and you can see all the different sounds that come with Wave, uh, <laughs> come with Nerve. And I'm going to load in a hat sample, and Here's a whole bunch of different hats. Uh, I'm going to pick uh, just a, a folder, say an like analog type of hat. We'll, we'll try that for starting. And so now I have a, a hi-hat loaded in. These might be too short, in fact, for this sort of a track. We might want some slightly longer ones. So I'm going to go back there and pick a different um, hat folder. So now we have a starting folder set. You don't have to do that every time you want to switch the sound. Fortunately, there's these arrows down here. So what I'm going to do is just do a very simple open hi-hat pattern for starters. We can, we can make that more complicated if we want in a bit. But now I just have four steps, and the third one is the hi-hat, so you get that upbeat hi-hat thing. Mute the loops for a second so we can really hear that hat. And now I can just navigate through different samples. Nice. Within that folder. That's right. So it's just going to consecutive samples in the folder. 
Uh, you can use the option key in conjunction and it will change the samples for every single pad that you have going. Oh, okay. Which is really fun if you have a drum kit loaded up and you know a lot of producers will collect a folder of their favorite kicks and their favorite snares and their favorite hats. But to switch through them is kind of generally tedious because you have to switch out the kick, switch out the snare, switch out the hat. Now you finally get to hear them all together. But with Nerve, you could just hold down the option key and it'll change for each pad. It'll keep that pad's folder uh, intact, but it'll just go to the next sample in there. That's very clever. Yeah, it's cool. And, and even further, you could hold down another key in conjunction as well, the command or control key on PC. And with those two keys held down, it will randomly select a sample from each of those folders. So instead oh, of always sense. just advancing you through that same order of things, now it's really just randomly picking one from each folder. And that allows you to just to hear kits instantly that you know, combinations that no one else has probably yeah. used before. So, um, it, and it keeps things stay musical because it's still selecting a kick for the kick pad and a snare for yeah. the snare pad. So you're not just hearing chaos, but you're hearing things that make musical sense. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I like that. So cool, so we got a hi-hat sample here. I think this one's decent, but we might tweak it a bit or something. I think it might be cool if it's if it's longer and then shorter, so, so to speak. So mm. I'm gonna make this uh, this pattern twice as long, so now it's eight steps. And now I have two hi-hats, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gate on the second one. So we have an open and then sort of a half open type of sound, all from the same sample. This gate parameter, which also has a slider right here, scales your envelope, so the envelope is now, every segment of that envelope is proportionally shorter. Uh, so that allows you to very quickly, uh, you know, make a shorter version a lot like moving a note duration in, in things, but yep. more for Nerf. Nice. Maybe a little quieter when it's down there too. I usually don't go too extreme on it, you know. This is a, a happy medium. When you see it, when you see it hitting to about a third of the way, that's usually where I'm happy. This threshold, it's very easy to make it more extreme. You know, overkill kind of thing. Yeah. But add in, uh, we can add a sort of another little clap on the top of there because I, I feel sure. like we've lost our clap a little bit there. I, I like that effect though. Yeah, great. Um, okay, let's go same similarly. Let's go to a folder of claps. Yeah. So I'll just go back to my folder because that's what I know. And my claps, I have classic and layered, and I'm going to go with uh, layered claps, I think. And let's just add those in. Were you thinking on every backbeat sort yeah. of thing? Yeah. Cool. Maybe just a little dirty as well. Maybe a little early as well. So Steve, if somebody's interested in purchasing or getting access to the plugin, uh, where would they go and uh, what kind of what's the pricing structure of it, etc.? That's right. Yeah, Nerve uh, comes with about two gigabytes of sounds, so it comes with a whole slew of stuff done by a bunch of different producers like Dom Kane. Uh, we've got a whole whole bunch of guys on there, Sample Magic, and a uh, lot of lot of great sounds. It uh, mm -hmm. retails for one ninety nine US. And it, it can be available. You can find information on purchasing it through X for Records, xferrecords.com. Awesome, right. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Steve. Thank you. Hi, I'm D. Ramirez. Hope you enjoyed the last segment with uh, myself and Steve Duda checking out his new plugin. Uh, there's more to come in the next episode or the next series of episodes, so uh, stay tuned. <laughs>